how I'm gonna get them. Hi, I'm Aina. Uh, hi guys, my name is Kevin Kumar. So let us go to the case fact of this case. Ravi. Next slide, please. Next slide, next slide. Um, for the case fact, the company Pawaja Steel Senjang Berhad, Pawaja Steel, was wound up by a court order on 8 November 2017. Financial institution provided Pawaja Steel with credit facilities from time to time. And in return, Pawaja Steel executed uh, a security sharing agreement in 1st June 2012, which named the financial institution as debenture holders for four parcels of industrial land, charge land. Prior to the winding up in November 2014, Roger still has ceased, uh, had ceased operation on the charge lands and had permitted the employment of its employees. As at the date of uh, the winding up, Roger still was said to be in debt, uh, indebted to the debenture holder for the sum of over 1.1 billion uh, ringgit Malaysia. The receiver and manager, RNM, was appointed under the terms of the debenture after Pawaja Steel was worn out. The RNM took steps uh, to sell the charged land in order to satisfy the debt of O by Pawaja Steel. The first sale value for the charged lands and was uh, approximately 83 million ringgit or back the valuation report obtained by the RNM valued the charged lands at approximately 118 million ringgit Malaysia at market price. Former employees of Provider still maintain that they are owed their wage uh, by the company. They maintain that their wage was uh, should be paid out uh, from the proceeds of any sale of the charged lands in priority over the bank over the debenture the holders by virtue of Section 31 of the Employee Act 1955. Alright, proceed to the question. In this case, the receiver and manager appointed over Pawaja Steel sold the charged lands. The total proceed from the sale would be insufficient to satisfy the debt of the debenture holders' financial institutions. The issue was whether the employees' wages, all referred to under Section 31 of the Employment Act, would have priority over the would have priority over the debenture holders' debts. The priority provisions on debenture holders' debts are set out in the Companies Act 2016. So, would the Employment Act prevail or the Companies Act 2016 provisions prevail?
So for the solution for the question is, the court ruled that the Employment Act was to take priority. This act was a specific piece of legislation and with a social purpose, giving priority to such employees which may have a side effect undesirable to secure creditors. But that is perhaps a matter to be considered by a legislator. The decision, the decision is that employees' interests and the calculations set out in Section 31 of the Employment Act are given priority. For receivership tells, the receiver and manager will have more certainty in how to access the priority of the employee's outstanding wages. That's all from us. Thank you. Anybody uh, have any question you can ask this group before I ask? Anybody? Will I turn back by the case back to that? Nah, thank you. To the second slide. Okay, please uh, explain about the uh, apa? section 31st of Employment Act because you don't mention in your answer. Okay, actually, you have to uh, explain first what is contained, uh, what is the, uh, what's uh, contained in the Employment Act uh, section 31st. Then uh, after that, uh, you can uh, state your 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 uh, your point to the answer the question okay so because uh, all of your members maybe don't know okay about the employment act section 31st what's about that do you have employment act section 34 31 what's stated in the section 31 employment act You understand my, my question? First of all, you have to explain, okay, whatever stated in Section 31st of Employment Act. Then after that, barulah you akan bagi you punya jawapan. Okay? Macam you all jawab law lah kan? Dalam you all, masa you all ambil company law or business law kan? The first thing you kena tahu which uh, section. Okay, you stated the section first, explanation about the section, and then barulah you akan bagi you punya jawapan. Okay, so maybe this one you just ambil mana-mana uh, soalan tu jawapan. Tak, so you expect siapa-siapa uh, yang baca you punya jawapan ni faham apa dia yang terkandung dalam section 31st of Employment Act. Tak tak? Okay, mungkin kat sini you just terus ambil kan? Soalan tu ambil terus ambil jawapan dia kan? Tak tak? Okay, because you punya explanation tu is very short. Okay. Boleh faham tak? Group 5 boleh tak? Dia, uh, untuk company secretary ni actually you punya jawapan nanti akan lebih kurang macam you all jawab company law. Okay? You akan ada certain-certain soalan dia akan uh, bila you bagi you punya uh, section berapa okay you akan dapat extra mark on that. Okay katakanlah lagi you jawab and then you bagi lagi apa ni example of cases okay bila kata, kata, katakanlah you terbaca kat mana-mana ada cases about the reservership ni dan you letak kat sini, you akan dapat extra mark. Kalau you jawab macam ni je, you just dapat apa ni markah yang minimum saja. 
Boleh. Boleh faham saya tak? Faham madam. We are we are working on it. Okay, so okay, so okay. Tak apa, it's okay. You working pun tak apa. Depan ni you akan bagi 10 jawapan kat saya uh, hari Rabu ni. Tak apa. Hari ni just macam, just on, tak apa, just introduction. How you want to answer soalan dalam company secretary. You don't worry on that. Relax, relax. Don't, jangan jangan stress. Hari ni kita just introduction je. Saya nak tengok macam mana cara you menjawab. Dan bila I comment, then you can boleh apa ni, backy balik you punya jawapan. You punya uh, uh, jawapan. Okay? So ada orang lain nak tanya apa-apa lagi tak untuk uh, group 5 ni? Then you are, uh, ada ada apa siapa nak tanya lagi tak? Ah uh, memang kiranya untuk soalan macam ni kena state mm -hmm. section 31 employees act lah. Ah uh, uh, tapi you don't worry in your final exam saya tak akan bagi soalan yang macam ni sebab saya tahu you all tak tahu pun pasal employment act. Alright. Okay. Dia hanya jawab apa yang ada dalam dia punya buku saja. Saya faham sebab setengah-setengah ni akan cari soalan yang ada je uh, tentang topik in your, apa ni dalam buku you akan ambil je kan. Tapi you don't worry on jawapan you mesti berkaitan dengan Companies Act 2016 and also the, the cases yang berkaitan dengan, dengan Companies Act itu sahaja. You don't worry on that. Okay you mesti risau kan macam mana nak cari tu tak. Don't worry on that. Alright. Okay. 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 So ini uh, yeah, pardon. Okay. Uh, tanya macam mana nak cari cases untuk company, untuk company X tu untuk isu dia tu Kan dia macam-macam kan? Ya yeah, sebab itulah uh, sehari tu masa first class saya bagi tahu you all kan You all akan baca you punya buku bersama dengan company X So sekarang nampak dah you all company X pun tak ada See? Uh, sebab nanti bila dalam you punya jawab apa ni uh, final pun saya tak akan bagi uh, You all tak pernah letak semua company X yang, yang kita belajar ia hanya berkaitan dengan chapter yang kita belajar sahaja, topik yang kita belajar sahaja yang you all kena ingat dan faham uh, eh, sebab dia tak sah case study tu saya cari case study case study? Case study tu, ha. nak cari case study tu uh, mana yang boleh kita cari untuk sebagai rujukan case study tu uh, maksudnya kalau case study kalau berkaitan dengan uh, apa ni, winding up memang ada dalam uh, company's act tu So nampak ya, you tak pernah balik you punya kamis ad kan? Betul tak? Mesti ada. You all kena download daripada 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 Mr Google pun ada dan kalau yang ada buku yang nama tu pun ada. Yang ada buku kuning. Kamis ad. Okay, so because uh, kalau kita as a company secretary, okay, kalau kita kerja pun kita memang akan bermain-main dengan section. Uh, semua uh, section yang berkaitan dalam dalam company act sebab kita akan manage kita punya uh, client all our client is a company okay, company dia akan tertakluk pada company act alright that's why masa hari tu bila saya suruh you all pergi interview all the company secretary okay kalau you all saya baca you all punya uh, report pun lebih kurang je lebih kurang dia punya situation sama ada nak tambah share tak nak jual share kan Ataupun director meninggal, nak lantik director baru. Betul tak? Benda yang sama je. So you as a company secretary, you akan berlegar-legar dekat uh, company act tu yang berlegar-legar yang dekat uh, section yang itu sahaja. That's why untuk you punya uh, apa uh, final, okay. Siapa-siapa yang boleh bagi extra, okay. Company act ataupun extra case, dia akan dapat extra mark. Siapa yang bagi jawapan oh, macam tu je ataupun dia katalah contoh jawapan dia yes ke no kan you have to know because uh, she is not the right director of the company you juga dapat dapat, dapat markah the minimum markah sahaja melainkan you kata okay uh, she is the uh, no because she is not the uh, director okay under section 123 stated that uh, so you akan, you akan dapat extra mark on that boleh faham? boleh Ashraf? Uh, lagi satu doktor ya yeah. Uh, contohlah kalau macam kita nak tahu soalan tu perlukan uh, case study atau tak tu macam mana doktor sebab all, kalau macam soalan tiga markah ke uh, you tengoklah on the mark, on the mark lah kalau markah dia sembilan takkanlah you boleh tak jawab yes or no je kan tak? kalau jawab soalan dia mungkin dua markah je mesti jawapan dia yes or no that's all tak? tapi kalau you tengok marks dia kat situ nine marks takkanlah you jawab yes or no tak? mesti ada explanation lain ok Okey Rata. Okey. Okey kalau tak ada, ada tak ada apa-apa kita proceed to next group boleh? 
Kita minta group Boleh media Okey group Wan Anik Group 8 Boleh Okay thank you group 5 Thank you madam Welcome. Madam kita saya nak present boleh tak Group saya nak volunteer uh, Group B Ah, uh, Group B uh, Is it okay uh, group 8 Nak tunggu dulu boleh ke group A nak present dulu. Kalau dia orang okey nak present, uh, dia orang boleh present dulu. Kalau tak, kita orang tunggu lepas group 8 lah. Okay, you all tunggu after group 8 sebab saya dah sebut group 8 dulu, okay? Okay, baik. Okay, group 8 uh, untuk group A, untuk kumpulan A. Wan Anik, Wan Nur Fariza, Farah Syafiqa, Umi Kasum, Nur Syafiqa, NCT Syuhaila. Where are you? Ya, yeah, madam. Okay. So, share the slide and also... Uh, Madam, sebelum nak tunggu grup 8 present, uh, saya nak tanya Okay, untuk uh, soalan, eh, untuk jawapan yang kalau kita nak masukkan dia punya case study Mesti dah uh, cases tu dia panjang kan? So, boleh tak kalau kita just state dia punya uh, name of cases Then uh, kita uh, cerita summary of uh, cases tu dengan apa yang court uh, punya result lah Boleh tak? Ya, yeah, yeah, betul Okay, kalau dalam exam, you akan buat macam tu je. You akan bagi nama and also the, uh, dia punya result. Kan, ataupun uh, apa ni summary of the case. You tak akan cerita panjang. Okay, kalau yang cerita panjang ni kita buat case biasa dalam kelas kita. Macam assignment saja memang kita akan ceritakan tentang tentang A ni, cari kat dia macam mana semua, semua and so on kan. Tapi in your exam, you just stated the uh, the apa ni, the, uh, the section. Okay, nama case tu and also dia punya Uh, conclusion, summary dia tu Sama ada dia bersalah sebab apa ataupun tidak macam tu je Okay, boleh Okay, kumpulan 8 Okay, siapa yang nak cakap ni? Senyap je ni Uh, Fariza, Puan Fariza. Um, Madam. Ya? Yeah. Um, ki, uh, sebab tadi ada record screen, maksudnya present semula lah. Uh, saya nak dengar you apa cakap sekarang. Yang present tu simpan dulu. Yang tu saya akan, saya akan, saya akan ambil lepas ni. Okay, yang okay. nak tengok you all dulu. Ha, okay. Alright. Okay. Okay, so jap eh. Okay. Alright. Um. Okay, so today six of us assalamualaikum we we'll present about uh, the topic is about what is uh, the question is about what is the challenges to the hotel research research and how they solve the problem so firstly i will in introduce to you all of the our members so my name is wanu fariza izati next <laughs> My name is Wan Ani Amirul bin Wan Azman. My name is Siti Syahila binti Muhammad Sabri. My name is Nurul Syafiqah binti Muhammad. My name is Farah Syafiqah Lina binti Ahmad Nazri. And my name is Umi Kalsum binti Muhammad Sibi. Okay, okay, I repeat again. The question for these cases is about what is the challenges to the hotel reservership and how they solve the problem. Okay, so uh, the intro about this case is during crisis time, 
the hospitality industry become fragile as a demand is driven by the gas. Okay, so the condition that affect the gas also affect the business. As is nature, hospitality investment usually have the longer return on their investment. And sometimes detached investor profit as owning a hotel and operating it into two different practices. So in this case study, 10 hotels that were a part of the estate went into bankruptcy and were in need of changes in management. The chosen consultant took the control of the estate as a reservation man manager, then changed the cost of the bankruptcy and saved the hotel estate in 18 month management. So this is the introduction of these cases. Okay, next. Okay, so the challenge that happened in the hotel is the debtor was in possession of the hotel properties and was so be responsible for their management. The transfer of authority to a third party consultant and management company during receivership would be unexpected and unwelcome. The properties were located in five different cities in two states, California and Arizona. There were three major national brands involved. Two of the properties were in default, each with a different major national brands. There were extensive different maintenance problem on both independence and brand properties. Due to the custom friends, there will be almost no lead time. So we see at the solutions. Okay, uh, these are the solutions for to overcome the challenges. There are three solutions. Firstly, the third party consulting and management company were hired on a Tuesday night. By leveraging existing on hand resources, they were able to deploy team in 48 hours for five cities in two different states. The team deployed to the to the properties were consisting for people each and a specialist for deployed for one property. Second, the first action I the first action item was to freeze all accounts, secure the cash, get insurance, and start with accounting. The new management team must quickly gain a deep and detailed understanding of the portfolio and cut the bankruptcy trustee closely inform on their progress. This enabled bankruptcy trustee to speak with confidence when advising the court and the major creditors of the financial and physical condition of their property. Okay, due to being able to leverage industry knowledge and contact with executives at the major national brands, they successfully brought defaulting properties out of default status. An extensive default maintenance plan was created in, in a focused and prioritized manner. The existing staff was trained using an online platform, which is HMB Bookstore, while managing to avoid the loss of significant numbers of existing staff. Next, we move to the result. Uh, okay, the result for this case is, despite the difficult circumstances related to timing and resources, plus the substantial deferred maintenance expenditures, the result showed an increase of the net operating income by 35.6% over 18 months of the estate's receivership. To be such as full in a hotel receivership, a third-party consultant and management company must keep the properties running while maintaining a good relationship with national firms. At the same time, the goal is to increase employee income, train employees, and increase the value of the properties for a possible sale. That's all. Okay, boleh tak buka slide yang kedua? Nak tengok. Sorry, slide ketiga. Sorry. 
Okay, nak tanya sikit tak? Okay, you all, once you all dapat assignment daripada saya kan? Okay, untuk you all tengok cases ataupun whatever questions yang berkaitan dengan winning up ataupun reservership ke whatever. Okay, the first thing yang you all buat, you all uh, cari Mr. Google terus tanya kan? You tu type uh, apa ni, topik tu kan? Betul tak? Okay, so yeah. I nak tanya you, you all sekarang ni berada kat Malaysia ke kat mana? Kat Malaysia kan? Okay, bila cari cases, make sure cases yang yang kita jadikan sebagai rujukan di Malaysia. Kalau you cari yang di OC, okay, dia punya Companies Act dia berbeza dengan kita. Sebab kita as Malaysia, kita akan guna Companies Act 2016. Nampak tak? Nampak tak? Nampak. Kalau you all buat macam ni, you all just Google, you as long as you dapat cases yang uh, pasal uh, receivership ni, okay, you tu ambil. Sedangkan you tak tengok pun whether cases tu kat mana kan? So kat sini you tahu dah this, this cases bukan dekat Malaysia kan? And for sure dia tak akan guna pakai uh, Companies Act uh, Malaysia. Okay, tapi dalam pada tu ada juga company yang kita as a Malaysia jadikan sebagai panduan. Okay, boleh tak kalau saya nak minta you all buat semula? Boleh tak untuk grup ni buat semula? Cari cases yang berkaitan yang you boleh jadikan sebagai panduan di Malaysia. Alright, sebab kalau you jawab macam ni pun tak ada, sebab saya pun tak ada nak bagi jawapan macam mana sebab ini adalah kes yang di uh, di oversee dan digunakan kapasiti at negara dia. Alright, dia tak ada sebab saya check dalam buku ni pun tak ada. Tak ada yang receiver yang kita gunakan kes ni sebagai panduan kita kat Malaysia. Dia ada kes-kes lain ada banyak. Okay, macam Stanfield, Gibbon, Trade, Auxiliary, yang tu ada banyak. Tapi yang kita as Malaysia jadikan sebagai panduan. Okay, kot kot kita jadikan ni sebagai panduan untuk kita mem, kita apa membuat keputusan. Boleh tak cari semula? Alright? Okay, tak apa, you don't worry. Okay, saya akan minta semula on this Wednesday. Ada masa lagi, don't worry. Okay, so thank you group 8. Okay, thank, thank you, you madam. Thank you, madam. Welcome. Thank you, madam. Welcome. Okay, then we proceed to uh, from group B. Group Omar. Group Omar kan? Yeah, group yeah, 6 betul. from uh, B. Okay. You may start now. Okay. Sekejap nak, doktor saya nak share screen je. Uh, nampak slide tak? Group member saya nampak slide tak? Nampak. Nampak, nampak. nampak. Okay, nice. okay, so Madam, kita orang nak mulakan boleh kan Madam? Okay, you can start. Auzubillah Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum and hello everyone, especially to Mary Zahara and my fellow friends. So today I and my five fellow members, that is Al Fateh, Ko Intan Mastura, Shamina, and Nuru Atira, will discover about this one case study that happened in Malaysia. So without wasting much more time, let us proceed with the situation that these both companies have. Okay, let okay. Let's see the case study. The uh, title is inability to pay debt section for six five. Okay, the the case is Jolly Private Limited Company is a company incorporated on one January two thousand five under the provision of Company Act two thousand sixteen. Have it registered office in at Muar Johor. Jamie Private Limited is a company incorporated on. 1 January 2006 under the provision of company at 2016 having its registered office at Batu Pahat, Johor. Jolly Private Limited approved Jamie Private Limited for purchase of input for his production. It was specifically agreed that upon reoccurring the input by Jolly Limited and raising of invoice by Jamie Private Limited, the entire payment of such five invoice shall be made in a timely manner as per the agreement, the Jolly Private Limited placed various purchase order for supply inputs. Jamie Private Limited supplied good as per the 
order placed by Jolly Private Limited and risk invoice against the set supply. Okay, the invoice were duly acknowledged by Jolly and an amount as part payment were also made. But thereafter, in spite of various requests made and reminders sent by Jamie, the Jolly had neither respond or repaid the remaining claim. On failure to pay the outstanding dues by the Jolly, Jamie Private Limited sent a demand notice date 1 January 2019 to the respondent to the respondent asking them to make the entire outstanding payment of RM500,000 inclusive the interest within 21 days from the receipt of the notice. Failing which the JME Private Limited should initiate the resolution process against the Jolly Private Limited. Despite the demand, not the demand notice, the Jolly did not pay the amount demand, neither raise any notice of dispute nor reply. Uh, to the not, uh, to the seat notice. Okay, that's all about our case. Okay, so since we all have uh, read a very long question, so let me summarize what is the case actually happened. Uh, the summary of this case actually, uh, Julie private, uh, Julie private limited company is a company that uh purchase input forest production from their suppliers, and then. Uh, their supplier is Jamie Private Limited. Okay, but then they keep purchasing the supplies and make as a debt for themselves. And at one time, their debt is a very big, and they can't afford to repay it. So that they need to settle their outstanding payments. So from this case what are the acts that we can use so that it can help the Jamie Private Limited to settle this case? So, without wasting much more time, let us discuss about the answer. Okay, from the questions, the question asks who can make an application before the adjudicating authority on behalf of the operational creditors and where to file such applications to initiate the insolvency process in the given case and also state the document needed to be attached with such application under Company Act 2019. So, from the questions, uh, next slide. From the question, um, my group this um, um, have a, my group um come up with this solution the entity who can make implication before the adjudicating authority is jamie private limited as it is the um, creditor of the jody private limited and um, based on the fact according to um section 465 stroke 5 inability to pay debts of company at company act 19 2019 um, Jamie Private Limited can file the petitions to wind up the company by the court within six months from the expired debt. If you can, if you see from the case above, the expired debt is, uh, the notice given was uh, 1 January 2019 to the respondent asking them to pay the entire payment, uh, entire payment, and then the the jolly need to make the payment um, within 21 days uh, from the receive. So the expired date is that is 21 days after the receive. So um, applications for the initiation of the corporate insolvency resolution process by operational creditor shall be filed in such form and manner and occupied with such fee as may be prescribed. So um, the next, uh, Jamie needs to prepare uh, such documents uh, along with the applications to furnish to for, uh, to wind up the company because they can afford to pay the payment so docu the documents will the documents are uh, the next presenter will explain okay. about it the document that uh, Jamie Private Limited uh, should prepare along with the application to finish which are firstly a copy of the invoice demanding payment or demand notice delivered by the operational creditor to the corporate debtor. Second, no written evidence given by the Jolly Private Limited relating to a dispute of the unpaid operational debt. Third, a copy of the certificate from the financial institution maintaining account of the operational 
character confirming that there is no payment of an unpaid operational debt given by the corporate debtor. Or, if available, a copy of any record with information utility confirming that there is no payment of an unpaid operational debt by the corporate debtor. And last document, if available, any other proof confirming that there is no payment of any unpaid operational debt by the corporate debtor or just other information as may be described. So that's all. So literally, as a conclusion, uh, in our case, we can follow according to the Act of 465 stroke 5 that is inability to pay debts. So as a company that can't receive their money from their account receivable, they might use this uh, Act to help them in getting back their money. So that's all from us. Thank you. Any question? Yes. Okay, actually, this is a winding up case. Okay, as you know, winding up have uh, has two uh, situations. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, as you know, okay, for winning up, there are two methods of winning up. Okay, the fir first one is compulsory, that one is by court order, and then the other one is a voluntary winning up. And then voluntary winning up also divided by two, the first one by the members of the company, and the other one is a from? From? Court order. Creditors. Creditors, okay. Okay, so uh, this group, Okay, uh, has been presented about the winning up, okay, for the second method under the creditors. Creditors, uh, view, creditors voluntary view. winning up. Yeah. Okay, so the, uh, the, the situation is, uh, okay, by court different by the member, member different by the uh, creditors. So you have to know, okay, all the process about the three situation in the winning up. Okay, because there are, uh, between them, there are uh, many, so many uh, process, okay, and then they are different between uh, each other, between each, each other. Okay, so, uh, class, ada soalan nak tanya for this group? Ada siapa-siapa nak tanya soalan? Untuk group 6? So, anyone that has any question can ask via chat or... Tak ada, yeah. lengkap semua. Tak ada. Okay, kalau tak ada, okay, thank you. Okay, any thank group volunteer Madam. lah. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Madam. Kita volunteer, welcome. Thank you, Madam. Kita thank volunteer you. je lah, any group. Okay, yang nak present today, yang rasa nak, nak present. Okay. Kalau volunteer semua tak ada. So ada tak siapa-siapa nak tanya? Okay, sebelum tu kita kita uh, buka dulu. Anybody nak tanya uh, macam mana uh, cara nak jawab? Okay, macam mana situasi dia ke? Apa whatever any any question you want to ask you can ask now. Okay, so kita stop dengan tiga kumpulan ni je dulu hari ni. Nanti lama-lama sangat takut you all uh, uh, pening. Okay, ada apa-apa, ada siapa-siapa nak tanya tak? Anything you want to ask? Doktor? Ya? Yeah. Kalau soalan pasal macam fakta kan? Soalan fakta. macam direct fakta. Okay. Lepas tu yang tadi tanya macam soalan karakteristik ke, proses ke, yang tu macam mana doktor? Okay, okay. okay. kalau proses, you have to answer about the process lah. Okay, contoh katalah macam uh, yang paling senang, example, proses kita nak tubuhkan company, the first uh, chapter kita belajar kan? in our company secretary kan the process. So the first thing, you what you have to do? The first thing you have to uh, search the name, right? Tidak, that's the process. Second, okay, lepas you dapat dia punya nama, you kena apa ni, uh, daftar dengan SSM and then you have to pay. Itu uh, adalah proses. Sama juga kalau macam proses we need up tadi. Katakanlah proses, uh, proses uh, kalau untuk 
uh, compulsory winning up. Okay, kalau compulsory uh, winning up ni actually court yang akan order. Tu akan order. Okay, untuk kita buat winning up. Bukan from our from, from uh, 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 our side. Okay, not from the member of the company, not from the uh, creditors. But the court. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, apa ni, uh, your, your company ni uh, have problem. Example dia macam uh, syarikat dia yang buat uh, apa? Uh, apa ni, uh, dia meniaga yang tak sah, barang yang tak sah, contoh okay, katakanlah dia uh, daftar in uh, constitution as a company export-import uh, export-import apa, apa export-import sekarang yang famous contoh uh, macam export-import untuk pakaian face contoh. mask uh, face okay, mask, mask whatever lah kan ok you dalam constitution ok you daftar ok dengan SSM your company adalah business yang berkaitan dengan pakaian contoh kan tapi lepas tu ok after a few years tu tiba-tiba you jual benda lain contoh benda yang tak boleh tak boleh kita uh, buat business kat Malaysia contoh senjata api ke contoh ok and then one of your client ke whoever yang uh, find out dia tahu dia akan report. Bila report, okay, kes tu akan masuk ke mahkamah. So, uh, mahkamah boleh keluarkan uh, penini, uh, petition untuk you buat winning up untuk tutup you punya company because you uh, buat satu perniagaan yang tidak sah. Itu contoh. So, proses dia adalah okay, mula-mula kena buat apa, second apa, third apa, itulah adalah dia punya proses. Okay, kalau fakta pula, macam soalan Asyarakat kata fakta is fakta. Kalau soalan yang berkaitan dengan fakta ni, biasa dia akan jawab based on Uh, section apa and then case apa yang uh, lebih kurang macam situation dalam fakta tu Boleh pernah tak cara dia different, benda yang berbeza Ashraf Are you okay? understand? Boleh doktor okay. Ingatkan kalau dia suruh macam bila proses tu pun dia nak libatkan section juga ke Tak tak tak, tak. kalau proses tu mungkin kalau you bagi section tu dan betul uh, dan ada okay Uh, akan dapat ekstra makan lah kat situ. Tapi kat biasa proses ni uh, proses je. Okay mungkin nak tahu section berapa sebab kalau kalau proses ni katalah contoh uh, section 480 dia ada A, B, C, D, E. You kena follow dia punya proses kan. Kalau fakta tadi you just state je. Okay, macam section yang Omar kata tadi untuk winning up uh, by the creditors 435 kan. 435 ke? Yang Omar tadi ke 43. Sorry saya lupa dah. Okay berkaitan dengan winning up Okay, from the view ataupun uh, from the uh, method of uh, creditors Okay, 435. You stated je lah kat situ Okay, contoh katakanlah uh, soalan berkaitan dengan uh, apa ni, uh, meeting contoh kan Ni uh, contoh yang paling senang yang nampak, meeting Okay, katakanlah meeting. Dalam companies act bagi tahu dah meeting, okay, dia punya quorum berapa Okay, macam tu. You kena bagi tahu je lah section berapa menyatakan, okay, you have to follow the companies act the section, this and this and this macam tu. Okay sebab, sebab soalan-soalan kita ni tak ada dah soalan yang state uh, apa ni, uh, def, uh, definition tak ada. Okay soalan yang case. Bermakna you, daripada case tu you kena uh, find out what the point, apa case dia, apa cerita dia and then you akan bagi jawapan based on situation yang ada tu. Macam you all jawab audit lah. Ni ada audit, jawab audit yang itu. Untuk, uh, untuk types of audit report kan. Siap, biasa kita akan bagi soalan cases Okay, so you as auditor You have to think that which types of audit report Either unqualified ke, qualified ke uh, Adverse ke ataupun disclaimer And then you akan state why you kata is unqualified Kenapa you kata this report is a disclaimer ha, Macam tu lah Sama je untuk company secretary ni pun sama je Boleh? Uh, doktor, kalau yeah. soalan tu macam minta ciri kan? Ciri. Minta? Ciri, ciri. Ciri perbezaan ke? Okay. Uh, lepas tu soalan yang macam tu tu kena ada section juga ke? Uh, tak payahlah yang tu. Difference tu tak ada lah. Tak perlulah. Sebab dalam dalam akta pun tak ada cerita kata tentang uh, perbezaan section 239. Uh, differences between tak ada. Okay, kalau yang tu you just, you just uh, state je lah kalau dia kata perbezaan antara A dengan B lah. You bagi kalau A macam ni, B macam ni, tu je lah. You just state macam tu je lah. Tak perlulah ada ada a section. Okay, tak perlulah ada apa ni uh, contoh uh, apa ni case, tak perlulah macam tu. Okay. Okay Dato, boleh Dato. Okay. Ingatkan dia kena relate juga sebab kadang-kadang ah, dia macam di sini sendiri ada kan. Tak, 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 t
That one tak payah, tak perlu. Relate. Anybody else? Yang nak tanya? Saya nak minta you Becky semula you punya apa? Uh, assignment yang hari ni boleh? Sebab yang ni saya akan, uh, bila saya fikir-fikir balik saya akan ambil kira okay, untuk yang uh, this assignment untuk you punya assignment yang last kali tu untuk video tu. Okay, bila tengok-tengok balik you punya apa ni, uh, apa ni, apa tu, mind map semua-semua tu macam simple sangat. Okay, so saya ingat saya akan ambil uh, apa ni, assignment ni untuk masuk lalu you punya carry mark. Okay. So Madam video yang hari ni kita orang present tu kena hantar balik video kat Madam tu. Ya. Yeah. Kalau boleh buat macam macam uh, you all dah ada hantar kat saya kan apa ni ni uh, group uh, itu kan nama kumpulan tu kan yang 1 2 3 sampai 8 tu kan. Boleh tak dekat tepi kolom tu yang uh, you letak uh, you punya uh, topic on katalah on reservation ke ataupun on winning up ke and then kat sebelah dia you all ketilkan you punya address untuk video ni. Boleh. So senang, bila saya nak buka, saya boleh buka sekaligus, saya boleh terus uh, mark kat, bagi markah kat situ. Uh, boleh, Madam, boleh. Alright, okay. So this, that one, okay. Uh, Masuk uh, yeah, dah, Ashraf. Masukkan yang itu kan, you ada hantar kat saya Google, uh, you ada hantar kat saya uh, group metric dengan nama kan, ingat tak? Dalam, dalam Excel ke apa? Excel yang sini kan? Excel ke Google, uh, uh, Aha, Google Drive ada. Ha, kan? Ada kan? Uh, you just tambah je dua column kat belah kanan okay. tu. Uh, satu kolom topik and other one you punya apa ni ni video yang you all uh, apa ni untuk assignment ni. Hmm. Oh nak upload upload. Ya yeah, upload yes UPO upload. Ah itu yang itulah bau you, kegunaan you yang you record yang video tadi tu. Kena upload. Yang ni saja ni just hari ni yang tiga kumpulan ni just orang tu intro je untuk tengok cara you menjawab nak bagi tahu betul ataupun tidak tu je. Saja je untuk you all prepare tak apalah. Okay, so that one boleh tak kalau saya nak you all hantar ah, okay. kepada saya hari uh, Kamis. Sebab kita sekarang ni minggu yang ke berapa kelas? Minggu yang ke? Tiga belas. Tiga belas. Tiga belas, tinggal lagi satu minggu kan? Haa. Uh -huh. Okay sebab uh, kalau uh, minggu last tu maknanya hari Kamis depan saya dah kena ready dengan you punya carry marks. Haa. Uh. Okay, okay. Uh, sebab saya nak, nak, nak sekarang nak tengok on you punya report and then hopefully bila you hantar pada hari hari, hari Kamis ni you punya assignment sekarang ni at least saya boleh dah boleh bagi you punya uh, markah on Sunday ke dah siap ke hopefully sebab minggu ni sekarang ni just, just untuk re revision sahaja uh, minggu ni dah ke depan, re uh, revision sahaja Okay, ya yeah. Uh, kiranya lepas ni dah tak ada present lah, kiranya present video je ke macam mana? Uh, tak ada, tak ada. Oh, okay. Berdebar eh, relax lah. Okay. Uh, lama tak jumpa kawan, kawan Masa ni lah, masa you present ni lah kita nak tengok you. Ah, oh, lama tak jumpa. Meda. Ya, ya, Meda. Omar. Yes. Uh, group saya dah present dah tadi. Meda tak boleh bagi markah on the spot ke? Saya kena bagi bukti video juga uh, ke? Tak Meda. boleh. Tak, tak. Sebab saya punya rubrik is uh, dalam video tu. Oh. How you explain explanation you all ni clear ke tak clear akan saya akan bagi markah kat situ. Bermakna you kena buat betul-betul lah ni. Okay. Mungkin tadi masa you all present tadi kan you all baca je betul tak skrip tu kan? Skrip pula apa powerpoint tu kan? Ha, mungkin bila uh, bagi markah kalau kalau ikut, ikut markah saya kat rubrik kalau you just baca you akan dapat the minimum marks. Saya nak cak, tengok cara how you explain. You ada point dalam you punya powerpoint and then you gunakan point yang ada dalam uh, powerpoint to explain. Okay, contoh macam saya ni tak tahu apa-apa pun pasal winning up. So, saya tengok point tu kan you perlu explain kat saya sampai saya faham. Ha, kalau you all just baca whatever in the uh, apa ni, powerpoint slide tu, saya pun boleh baca. My daughter pun boleh baca kan. Ha, semua orang boleh baca. Tapi how you explain, ha, tu yang paling penting. Okay. Anybody? Ada apa-apa nak tanya lagi? Uh, kiranya tarikh submit last hari Kamis ni Doktor? Hari Kamis ni. Cukup kan ni baru Ahad. Empat hari lagi. Hari Kamis uh, sebelum pukul empat petang. Nanti kelas rap, uh, tolong apa ni, itulah share lah Google, Google dalam, Google dah dalam WhatsApp. Okay. 
Sorry, sorry. Interrupt. Budak-budak ni. Macam ni lah. Bila kita ada kelas macam tu lah. Masa tu lah nak tanya nak benda tu, nak benda ni. Macam, macam adik-adik you all lah kan. You ada kelas je sebut datang tu tak? Oh, macam mana? You orang dah boring dah. Setakat ni uh, kita punya kelas tak ada kan yang kena quarantine ataupun yang positif covid kan? Ada tak? Semua sel- semua okey? Takkan Alhamdulillah kita datang. Alhamdulillah. Okay, kita sama-sama doakan. Bangun pagi-pagi tu tolonglah baca apa ni ni Yasin doakan kita kita semua ni. Okay so ada apa-apa lagi tanya tak? Sebab saya tak, tak nak panjang sangat masa tu you all takut you all. Uh, Madam, uh, kita, ha, ya, saya. Uh, kita semua still kena hantar fully punya jawapan ke? Ya yeah, betul. Ya yeah, betul. Pada hari Rabu. Ya. Yeah. Okay Rabu ah, hantar ah, fully jawapan. Sorry tadi saya kata tambah dua kolom kan tambah tiga kolom sorry. Satu tambah kolom dua lagi dua. adalah you punya you apa ni cam scanner you punya jawapan you masuk kat situ share kat situ. Sebab nanti kita boleh share dengan kawan-kawan yang lain untuk diorang tengok. Betul tak? Macam mana okay. kan? Okay. So hari Rabu hantar jawapan, hari Kamis hantar video so, present. Ya yeah, betul. Uh. Oh scan-scan. Dah tu kena tangan lah kan yang jawapan tu kan? Ha jawapan tangan lah. Lagi bila tu tangan you baca. Betul tak? Okay. Uh, tapi you bagi-bagi kan lah apa ni, uh, apa ni, uh, apa, assignment ni dengan kawan-kawan you all ada lima orang kan Yang ni buat ni, yang ni buat ni. Tapi tapi make sure you discuss. Okay, Rabu ni pun sama eh. You all kena hantar kat saya. You punya bukti bahawa you memang berdiskusi. Aku yang discuss dua orang ni yang tiga tidur. Okay. Uh, madam, uh, yeah. macam kita ah. orang yang dah siap uh, jawapan semua tu dalam word Boleh tak kita orang nak sami yang tu je? Nanti kita boleh. orang hantar sekali gambar yang kita orang discuss tu Boleh, boleh. Okay. Boleh tak ada masalah. Boleh Okay, uh, okay juga tu Omar, good idea. Nanti hari Rabu hantar uh, jawapan dengan soalan bersama dengan gambar you all Okay, sebab kita ni tak tahu bila pandemik kita akan berakhir. Tengok, tengok you all tak, tak masuk kampus pun lah lepas ni. Betul tak? Okay, kita tak pasti kan apa yang akan berlaku akan datang. Tengok sekolah pun dah PDPDR sampai bulan bulan tujuh. Okay, SPM pun bulan tiga. Aduh. Tahun depan. Kan? Ha. Ha, tahun depan, ya. Yeah. Bulan tiga SPM. Pengambilan untuk UNIZA pun untuk tahun ni pun tak tahu bila. So, macam-macam boleh berlaku kan betul tak? Tapi tak berkata doa je yang terbaik. Okay, kalau ada, ada apa-apa lagi nak tanya, uh, apa ni boleh je WhatsApp dalam grup. Okay, tiba-tiba petang ni lepas main asal kerja lagi teringat nak tanya apa-apa Okay, WhatsApp aja dalam grup, nanti saya akan jawab Okay, boleh? Okay hmm, Saya rasa lain tak elok kot, apa kerja hilang, kerja ada, kerja tak ada ni Lain apa, uh, internet kat rumah saya Okay, kalau tak ada apa-apa, insyaAllah kita jumpa lagi Rabu. Tengoklah lah Rabu ni kalau saya free Kita, saya just bagi Google, kita, kita apa jumpa sekejap ke dalam setengah jam hari Rabu ni? Okey, okey. Ha eh. Okey. Ataupun uh, siapa-siapa yang ada masalah boleh uh, jumpa saya kita buka sekejap Google Meet hari Rabu just discuss sikit-sikit. Okey, kalau yang tak ada masalah tak ada masalah, tak apa okey. Okey, uh, kalau tak ada apa-apa insya-Allah kita jumpa hari Rabu. Okey, take care, stay safe. Okey, kesalahan family semua. Okey, assalamualaikum. Thank you, Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam.